calls me, I will answer, I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I pray God will help every one of us who will be available for the Lord in Jesus' name. I want to welcome you all to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. To God be the glory for giving us this privilege to come together tonight for the study of the word of God. And as you have come, the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name wherever you're watching us. This is Deep Palai Bible Church, Burlington, New Jersey. By the grace of God in this church, we meet three times every week. We come together on Sundays for our worship, worship service every Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning. On Mondays, we meet for our Bible study, 6.30 p.m. every Monday. On Thursdays, we come together for our revival hour, also 6.30 p.m. Every Wednesday, we meet for our prayer section. I want to encourage you to come along with us. The Lord will bless you as you join us for all the services in Jesus' name. God bless you all in Jesus' name. You're all welcome. Please, it's not time to give unto the Lord. Let's bring out whatsoever I want to offer to the Lord, our tithes and our offerings. 
If you're online, you want to give up, please use the cash app information on your screen. And through that, you can give. God bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with all, it shall be measured to you again. Let's lift it up as we pray on them now. Father, we thank you because you are the great provider. Your blessings, your provisions, your preservations, your greatness upon our lives, they're so great. And therefore, we have come to offer to you tonight. Father, we pray, let this be acceptable and be used to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Bless us in return, O Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's open our eyes and drop it into the bag that has been passed around. God bless you as you do that. And then we remain uh, standing as we sing together from our gospel hymns and song. Hymn number three. Gospel hymns and song number three. Impatient art be still. What though it tarries long? What though the triumph song is still delayed? Though thou hast his promise sure, and that is all secure, be not afraid, be not afraid, be still, be still, impatient heart, be still. <laughs> Oh, 
for the Lord in Jesus' name. God bless you. Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading, but before we reach, I will have a moment of prayer. Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that will speak to our present needs, physically, spiritually, materially, you will impress upon our heart. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read your word together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 19. Deuteronomy chapter 19. Chapter 19. When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities, and in their houses, thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee a way, and divide the coasts of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts, that every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee thither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hateth not in time past, as when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the helve, and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live. Lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot and overtake him, because the way is long, and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee, and if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee, beside these three that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally that he die, and fleeth into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eyes shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother so shalt thou put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. And thine eyes shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Chapter 20 When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, 
be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house, and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard, and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed the wife, and hath not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make the answer of peace, and open unto thee, then it shall be, that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women, and the little ones, and the cattle, and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life, to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee, until it be subdued. We have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take what we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Shall we all rise up, please? Let's commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. We will not be afraid. The Lord is with us in every battle. Is with you, is with me. He will give us victory in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the grace to have confidence and assurance and faith in his word that we will not be anxious, we will not be eager, we will not be impatient. We will follow the Lord faithfully and the Lord will grant us victory on every side in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Let's pray that tonight the spirit of the Lord will minister to us as the word of God comes forth tonight. Let's pray and commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. The Lord will bless us from the pages of the scriptures tonight in Jesus' name. Shall we pray and commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord? If you are there, I said, praise the Lord. The Lord make us one in a practical way in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for your faithfulness always revealing your mind to us. And when you reveal your truth and your mind, you always give us the grace. When we claim that grace, we're asking, Lord, that tonight your word will be plain and clear to everyone in Jesus' name. And whatever may be in us, which is not according to your word, according to your will, 
that you remove everything in Jesus' name that according to your word and according to the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ in a very definite way as the Father and the Son are one will be perfectly united in one in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. In the epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, and we're studying from verse 12 to verse 31. Let's look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, For as the body is one, and as many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, a one body, so also is Christ. So also is the body of Christ, so also is the church. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, But now, as God said, the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. Then in verse 24, it tells us in verse 24, it says, For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which large. Verse 28, in verse 28, it says, And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing helps governments, diversities of tongues. Verse 31, in verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. You'll see in those selected verses that the body of Christ is one. The church is one. As the body is one, with all the many members having various functions and different functions, the Lord makes us to be one so that we can cooperate together, coordinate together, and then we'll move the body forward. And then it says, all the functions of the members of the body, they remain as God himself has said every member in the body. And then he even talks about the ministers. In that verse 28, he said, the Lord himself has said those ministers, the way they are, the functions they have, and the ministries they have. And then it says in verse 31, covet honestly, the best gifts. What does that mean? That as you see your position and your place in the body where he has set you, then you will covet honestly the best gifts that will make you function appropriately in the place that the Lord himself has set you. Today we're looking at the message, the unity and usefulness of members of the body. The usefulness of members of the body. When the member and when the minister abides and stays in the calling the Lord has set him in, then he will be useful and then he's united, he's cooperating with all the other members of the body who are also having their own function and their own roles and their own responsibilities. As we're united together like that, then we have the usefulness of all the members and they contribute to the health of the body, to the happiness of the body, and to the progress of the body, and to the purposeful pursuit of the body. Unity, on the one hand, was the usefulness. If we're united but we're not useful, that's not enough. If we are useful and we're not united, that's not enough. There must be a combination of the usefulness and the unity of the members so that 
the body of Christ and the church of the living God can make progress and be what he wants us to be, where he wants us to be, and achieve for him and for his glory all that he wants us to achieve, the unity and the usefulness of members of the body. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, purposeful relationship of members are set by God. It's the Lord that set uh, all those members and then we have relationship, but it is a purposeful relationship of all the members as the Lord himself has set for the church. Number two, practical righteousness of members are specified by God practical righteousness there's a kind of righteousness that is theoretical and there's a kind of righteousness that is superficial there's a kind of righteousness that is hidden we cannot see it but this one that the lord is calling the members of the church to is practical righteousness of the members as specified by god point number three will be prescribed responsibilities of ministers as sealed by god the lord has given those responsibilities and he has sealed them so that I cannot change those responsibilities. You cannot change those responsibilities. They are sealed by the Lord Himself. And as He has given the specifications as to how we serve and what we do and how we minister, so we all cooperate together in serving the way the Lord Himself has given us the word and has sealed it that we serve in that way. Let's come to point number one is the purposeful relationship of members as set by God. We're coming to uh, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. It says in verse 12, for as the body is one and as many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so is christ in verse 21 it tells us in verse 21 it says the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet i have no need of thee it brings us into relationship together and the relationship is purposeful and it is the lord that has set such relationship for members of a physical body and then for the members of his mystic body that he is of the body of christ three things we're looking at here number one converted baptized members saved by grace we cannot just say we're members of his body if we're not converted all have seen that come short of the glory of god and it is the salvation the conversion we have by the grace of god that brings us integrates us into the body to become members of the body of christ number one then converted baptized members saved by grace number two crucified buried members selfless and godly when we're coming to the body of christ as children of god the self will still be there even after salvation the depravity will be there after salvation but then we come to god for the second work of grace and that self that adamic nature that depravity is crucified and is dead and is buried they will become selfless and godly number three consecrated beneficial members set for good the members of the body who are saved who are sanctified they now consecrate everything to the lord that they will become of benefit to the whole body of christ and they search their mind for the good of the body the good of 
the church. Let's look at number one. Converted, baptized, members, saved by grace. It tells us in verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. As you think about water baptism, you also think about the spirit baptism. We are baptized into one body by the spirit. That is, as you are born again, you confess your sin, you forsake your sin, you turn to the Lord and you are born again. The spirit of God takes us and he mercies us into the body, integrates us into the body. And that integrating into the body is what is referred to as being baptized into one body. Whether we're Jews or Gentile, there's no Jewish church and Gentile church. The Jewish people and the Gentile people, when they are born again, they are part of the same body, the same church. Whether we are born or free, there are no slaves and free people in the kingdom of God. As you come, we're all one in Christ, male and female, young and old, all those who are born again, we have become part of this one body. Look at Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 3. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3, know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, this referring to water baptism, the Lord himself said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's water baptism. The question for you is, have you been baptized in water since you became born again? Have you surrendered yourself, submitted yourself, and carried both soul, spirit, and body? And according to the word of God, you obey the word of God, and you are baptized in water. That makes you a member of the body of Christ. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus, Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. That he is the water baptism is not by sprinkling. You are immersed, you are buried into the water and then you come out. Then it says in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up, from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's the evidence that we're converted. You are converted, you are baptized in water, and you identify with Christ in that water baptism, and then the grace of God is now in you, converted, baptized, and saved by grace. And now you walk in newness of life. In verse 5, it tells us, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The power of the Spirit of God turns our lives around and then we walk in the likeness of his resurrection. All this by grace. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 11. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. That salvation is for all. And the moment you accept, and the moment you believe, and the moment you receive, that grace works in your life. And this is the result of the grace. Look at verse 12. 12, it says teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly you have repented you have believed on the lord jesus christ you have been baptized in water you identified with christ now you deny ungodliness and worldly laws that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world Temptations are in this present world, but the grace of God is available, and that 
grace is sufficient and will make you an overcomer so that in this present world you live soberly you live righteously and you live godly then in verse 13 it says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works let's come to number two here and his crucified buried members selfless and godly hey, look at first corinthians chapter uh, 12 reading from verse 15 if the foot shall say because i am not the hand i am not of the body you see therefore not of the body you see when we're born again and then we go to the lord and self is crucified and self crucified and dead is buried and we're sanctified and selfless there is no carnal comparison anymore and so the hand uh, if you are the active member of the church cannot say unto the foot if you are the progressive moving member of the church one cannot say to the other I don't have need of you there is no jealousy there is no envy there's no carnal comparison and there is no competition in the body of Christ then it says in verse 16 it says and if the ear shall say because I am not the eye I am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if a member of the church will then retreat and reverse and then it will Will say because my role my responsibility is not like his role it's not like her role therefore I'm not going to do anything to contribute to the progress of the body the members of the body don't do that and when we come to Christ we're saved and we're sanctified and the old Adamic nature is uh, crucified and totally taken away we're not telling the other person you are not important I'm important and he is not telling us you are not important I'm important all the members will work together perfectly in verse 17 it says if the whole body were an eye where were the earring if the eye becomes uh, so important I see I see I can see and then you feel that the ear is not important the mouth is not important where will be the whole body it is at the various members function together harmoniously and unitedly cooperatively purposefully that's when you have the whole body uh, working properly if the whole were hearing where were the smelling look at verse 18 now but now as god said the members every one of them in the body when we're saved when we're sanctified all we need to do is to be praising god thanking god not comparing not saying i'm not happy where god has set me i'm not happy where god has put me but we look at what we're doing and then we get the best gifts of god to be the best in that area god has appointed us and we're so grateful to god that even me of all people i can be allowed to do this because of that we're giving glory to God and we're not complaining because the Lord in his wisdom the Lord in his love and the Lord in his foresight he knew what you will be and he knew what you will best contribute to the body of Christ but now as God said the members every one of them in the body as it has pleased him not as it has pleased you not as it has pleased other people not as it has pleased your friends or your brethren or your relatives blood relations no the lord has set everyone in the body as 
it has pleased him. All we can say is, the will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. In Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 6, it says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old character is crucified with him. Our old habit is crucified with him. Our old nature is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. The very nucleus of sin, the very root of sin, and the very body of sin destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. And then it says in verse 7, it says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. If you have identified with Christ, you are crucified. If you have identified with Christ that you are dead with him, it says, he that is dead is freed from sin. Then it tells us in verse 11, in verse 11 it says, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I pray the Lord will effect that in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at uh, Philippians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife of vain glory. What's he telling us there? Whatever I do by strife will not be recognized by God. God has a good work and it will not be rewarded so if I spend my life the major part of my life striving and then having vain glory all those things I do in strive and vain glory whatever good it may appear to have done to the body of Christ is not recognized by God let nothing be done through strife of vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves when I esteem other people better than myself and I give glory to God on their behalf I'm happy they're doing what they are doing they are happy I'm doing what I'm doing that's the unity of the body and then in verse 4 it says it says look not everyone every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others that's telling us that we should want the other brother to succeed. We should want the other sister to succeed. We're not just looking at what I'm doing. I want to be my best. I want to be high. I want to be good. I want to have my life busy and doing something great. We want to look at other people that they will be useful, that they will be uplifted, and that they too will be happy in what God has said them to do. Look not not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. How will that happen in verse 5? Let this might be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That's how to do it. Let the mind of Christ be in you, the mind of love and the mind of appreciating other people and the mind of raising them up, lifting them up so that they will be all the Lord has called them to be. We're looking at number three now. Number three is the consecrated beneficial members search for good. The member of the body of Christ, like any of the members of the hand, shall say, the Lord has set me here for good. For good in one sense, only to do good, only to contribute to the progress of the body of Christ for good permanent until God moves you to another level and to another area you see I am here for good for this is how God has set me look at first Corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 18 but now as God set the members every one of them in the body as it has pleased him if you grumble if you complain if you strive 
if you fight, if you become political, that he is your campaigning and you become a politician in the church, a politician in the body of Christ. It means that you are saying you don't accept what God has done. God has set everyone, members, as it has pleased him. What pleases the Lord has not pleased you. And you are looking beyond what God has done. And you are blaming God. Why have you done this? Why did you put me here? What did so and so have that I don't have? And what can so and so do that I cannot do? We shouldn't do that. Once you are in the hand of God and you are in the body of Christ, to start with, even to be saved, to be born again, is by grace, not by marriage. And then to become a serving member in the body of Christ is by grace and it is not by marriage. You just thank God because God has set members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. Look at verse 9. And if they were all one member doing the same thing, having the same responsibility, where were the whole body? Will not some responsibility in the church be overlooked, be neglected? Look at verse 20. In verse 20, but now there are many members, yet but one body many members different uh, responsibilities yet it is one body and then it says in verse 21 the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee they walk together and they cooperate together no again the head to the feet the highest to the lowest i have no need of you this is what god has done and we're glorifying God for that. Look at Job chapter 29, reading from verse 12. Job chapter 29, we're reading from verse 12. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. Verse 13, it says, the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Verse 14, I put on righteousness, and it closed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Look at verse 15, a very important. I was eyes to the blind. That's our responsibility. If the eye is there in the body, you see those who are blind, and then you guide them, you teach them, you instruct them, you show them the way. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. And those who are lame, you understand, the eyes may not be able to help them. But the people that have feet, they can carry them on their shoulders. And it says, I was feet to the lame, I was eyes to the blind. That's the work he has called us to do in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. But we are his workmanship. He has created all like that, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we shall walk in them. That's the ordination of God. That's the way God has set members in the body. And I pray God will grant us abundance of grace. We will fulfill our calling as set by God in Jesus' name. Did I hear a good amen? amen? Number two now. Number two, practical righteousness of members are specified by God. Now, you, you need to understand you are part of the body of Christ. And the Lord has set also, and he wants us to have righteousness, practical righteousness of members are specified by by God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 22, nay, much more. Those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are 
necessary. The members of the body which appear to be more feeble are necessary. There are some parts of the body that are delicate. For example, our eyes, any little uh, grain of sand that gets into the eye will make us feel the discomfort because it's feeble, it is delicate. And there are other parts of the body too. A little boil in any part of the body can so disorganize you because it makes that area feeble. But you know, we don't pull out the tooth anytime you are eating and you bite your tongue or you bite your cheek. You don't say, well, that is bad. You've done it before. I won't tolerate that again. Pull it out and throw it out. If we did that, some of us will have no tooth left in our mouth. They will care for them. They're still necessary. The same thing with members of the body of Christ. We don't throw that one away because of this. He is necessary and she is necessary. And when we think of all the members of the body of Christ like that, everyone will feel their place. Everyone will be useful in their calling. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the compassion of members towards the feeble the compassion of members towards the feeble number two the care of members within the flock all of us who are the folk of Christ were the flock of Christ and we need to have the care of members within the flock number three the character of members as his followers he calls us to follow him and so we are not people that are following our mind following our instincts and following whatever we want to do we we'll look at christ looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and we're following him and that determines our character look at number one the compassion of members towards the feeble we're looking at uh, job chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. Job chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. That's what we do to do so feeble. You see, any member of the church, any member of the house fellowship, any member of the choir, any member of uh, ushers, any section at all, you know, we're not stoned. Somebody might become weak, might become sick, might become feeble. We're not to trample on them. We're not to push them down. We're to strengthen them, strengthen the weak hands. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, Thy words are upholding him that was falling. That's what we need to do as we minister, as members of the body to one another. And thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. I pray God will help us to remember to do that every time in Jesus' name. We will not gossip about members who are feeble. We will not backbite members who are feeble. We will not criticize or condemn members who are feeble. Our responsibility is to see what can I contribute to his life? What can I contribute to her life that will make her strong or stronger? And look at Isaiah chapter 35, reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Now you need to remember when you say something, you know, although the brother you are talking about may not be there, the sister you are talking about may not be there, one way or the other, words go around. And the things you say in your private corner may get to the brother you spoke about or the sister you spoke about. The question is, will this encourage him? He's not here. And I'm talking about him. He's not here. 
and uh, we're discussing about him if he happens to hear all that we're saying here will that confirm the feeble knees will that strengthen the weak hands always think about that and the Lord will make you to positively contribute to the strength and to the grace of God in other people's lives in Jesus name first Thessalonians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 14 first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 now we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly and when you warn people if somebody is unruly you don't want the person in an unruly manner somebody is acting angry you don't warn him also with anger you will have a gentle disposition if somebody is going wrong the way to help bring that person back is what the fruit of the spirit which is love and joy and then you are positive and you want the best for them that's how to want comfort the feeble-minded don't condemn them what happened that you are so feeble why is it you are not like that why is it you are not like that if that happened to me i know what i will do you that's not how to comfort people you comfort them you come inside their skin you see what their challenges are and what their difficulties are and then you have a word of comfort a word of a help a word that will encourage encourage him and bring him up support the weak be patient towards all men be patient towards all men don't jump into conclusion don't bounce on people you know human beings are delicate understand we are feeling understand we have challenges and as you are helping people you are patient towards all men look at verse 15 in verse 15 see that none render evil for evil unto any man the other time i was feeble this is the way he dealt with me and i almost ran away from the fold and now he is feeble and i'm strong i remember what he did i'm going to throw back a stone unto him don't do that see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men let's look at number two here number two the care of members within the flock we're coming to first corinthians chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 24 it says for our comely parts have no need but god has tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which large it looks like many people are different from god god gives abundant honor to that part which large as we look at our fellowship our relationship together sometimes uh, somebody might lack maybe communication ability somebody might lack a kind of practical wisdom uh, what he ought to do and the people who lack we seem to look down on them and we seem to brush them aside because of their lack god is not like that and as we follow god and as we depend upon god and we want to be more and more faithful followers of god here is what god has done he has given more abundant honor to that part which lack and that's what we ought to do look at verse 25 it says that there should be no schism, no division, no disagreement, no, no discord in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. The members should have the same care 
one for another there should be no tribalism the members should have the same care one for another is born again she's born again he's not from the same tribe she's not from the same tribe the members should have the same care one for another i cannot stay in that district the leader there is not from our place and he doesn't understand my dialect or my local language we should have the same care one for another look away from tribe and look away from all the things that divide us the blood of jesus that washed us and cleansed us and saved us has made us one let us remain one in second corinthians chapter 8 verse 16 second corinthians chapter 8 we're reading from verse 16 but thanks be to god which has put the same earnest care into the heart of titus for you god be praised because that same god who knows your need and knows the heart of titus and titus can supply that he puts the same earnest care into the heart of titus for you when we talk of care if the care is sluggish if the care is slow if the care is delayed the fellow might have pass through the need and all that before we even get to him but if we know that this person has need now and we are not looking here and there earnestly and quickly and swiftly we supply that care that's what the lord is teaching us there in verse 17 it says for indeed he accepted the exhortation but being more forward of his own accord he went unto you he went unto you there are people uh, that say i want to visit uh, sister so and so i want to visit brother so and so i want to visit this family and i know that they need food but i'm waiting i will tell our group pastor before I go, they want to tell everybody before they can go. While the person is suffering with hunger, and the hunger is biting the whole family, and they cannot feed or take care of the children, the family very well, they are waiting for permission. And before they get to the group pastor or the pastor or the overseer, uh, the fellow is already drowning in the sea of problem. But you have an escape care and because of honest care you are more forward and you know this is the need and you meet the need at that point and the lord will reward your sacrifice in jesus name and look at verse 21 in verse 21 providing for honest things that's what we do you provide for the honest needs of people not only in the sight of the lord but also in the sight of all men let's come to number three here number three is the character of members as his followers we're looking at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 26 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 26 and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it if one member is suffering there are many areas of suffering once we open our eyes we will see and once we open our ears we will hear and once we visit each other or telephone each other we will see what the need is and we will see if we're open to each other and if we're frank with each other we will know when another member is suffering and whether one one member suffer all members suffer with it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it and then it goes on in verse 27 it says but now are ye the body of Christ and members in particular always be conscious of that I am a member of the body 
and I must be doing something. I must be contributing to the progress of the body. It tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. What does that mean to weep with them that weep? And do I just say, you know, go to the house of somebody who is weeping and as I step at the door, I then begin to weep. I begin to cry crocodile tears. No, I look at what is making him to weep. And I put myself in his shoes, in her shoes. And then if I can solve that problem in identifying with those who are weeping, I go to their houses and then I empathize, I sympathize, I identify with them and I supply the need. The Lord give us wisdom. The Lord give you wisdom. And let's look at Galatians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 2. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear ye one another's bodies. Don't say that's his uh, responsibility. He needs to bear his own body. Now. Um, I don't know why he's in that need. He's not telling us to look underneath the carpet and be finding out why is he going through that? Why is he going through that? Where the knowledge is going through a body, under a body, bear ye one another's bodies and so fulfill the law of Christ. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, let us not be weary in well doing. Am I the only one I helped, brother so and so? That's your calling. I help sister so and so. That's your calling. I help that family. That's your calling. And God has so positioned you and he has blessed you that your own needs are met and you have extra to spare. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Look at verse 10. As we therefore have opportunity, be looking for opportunity, opportunity to help, opportunity to lift up somebody else, opportunity to uh, minister to somebody in need. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, all men, even those who are not born again, they have a need. You don't want them to die of hunger before they get saved. Meaning to them and he says especially now unto them who are the household of faith and the Lord help us to do that according to his will according to his word in Jesus name and look at first Timothy chapter 5 verse 21 first Timothy chapter 5 verse 21 I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect says that thou observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality how is it that person has need and there's no brother no sister in that community that can even look into that need and then another person has a need and then everybody is rallying around and they're giving much more than the fellow needs meanwhile this one is dying of hunger this one is dying of pressure and burden and the other one has more than enough it says we should do nothing by partiality. Let, let's love like Jesus loved. And let's love like the head of the body. And then all the members of the body will minister to one another without preferring one before another and without any partiality. Let's come to number three now. Point number three, prescribed responsibilities of ministers are sealed by God. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 18, and God has said some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, and 
after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, health, governments, diversities of tongues. It tells us in verse 31, in verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Why do you covet honestly the best gifts? I want to be of more help to people. I want to lift up other people. I want to minister to the needs of people. And because I am handicapped at present, I'm not able to offer all the help I want to offer. That's why I'm praying honestly that God will give me the best gifts so I'll be able to minister to more of the members of the body of Christ and yet I show to you a more excellent way there's an excellent way of ministering to people there's an excellent method of sharing what we have unto people and it's uh, the way of love everything we offer we offer in love prescribed responsibilities as ministers sealed by God three things we're looking at number one the appointed ministry of apostles and other ministers. Number two, the assigned ministry of ambassadors and all members. Number three, the acceptable motive of aspiring for more. Let's look at number one, the appointed ministry of apostles and other ministers we're coming back to first corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 and god has set some in the church first apostles but the apostles are not the only ministers there are other ministers uh, secondly prophets thirdly teachers and that's not the end of the ministers after that miracles then gifts of healing helps governments, administration, and diversities of tongues. Those are the apostles and the other ministers. And God has appointed their ministry. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 11. And he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers why what's their responsibility let's look at verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ that's what we all do with united effort we're useful to the body of Christ we edify we teach we train we mature the saints of God in verse 13 it says till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, a matured man, a competent man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And then in verse 14, it says that we as for the no more children, when those ministers, when they minister to us and their ministries unite to edify the church, it says will be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in which to deceive. In Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4, Jeremiah chapter 23, we're reading from verse 4, and I will set up shepherds over them. That's the decision of God. That's the prerogative of God that he sets the ministers in the body as it has pleased him. And here is his promise. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. When the ministers minister appropriately, 
likely all the lacks in the body of Christ will be supplied all the lacks in our church the Lord will supply in Jesus name look at chapter 3 verse 15 Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 and I will give you pastors according to my own heart not according to their heart you know pastors if the pastors come and the only minister according to their heart and they determine this is the way I'm going to talk to them and this is the way I'm going to do it will not agree with God if we're going to minister and minister to the needs of the people our own mind our own heart, our own idea, our own self-will, all that should be thrown away. And now we minister according to the mind of God, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Acts chapter 20, we're looking at verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. The Lord gave us the mind of Christ to always appreciate the church of God and minister to them appropriately in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two is the assigned ministry of ambassadors and all ministers. It's not only the apostles and the prophets and the teachers and the miracle workers and those who have the gifts of healing. All of us, if we're waiting for that, we don't all have the apostolic ministry. Look at First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29. Are all apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? The answer is no. Are all teachers? The answer is no. Are all workers of miracles? The answer is no. Look at verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing? The answer is no. Do all speak with tongues? The answer is no. Do all interpret? The answer is no. Well, if not everybody, if everybody does not have all these gifts, where do you come in? As members of the body of Christ, you come in as ambassadors of Christ. You might not be an apostle, but you are an ambassador of Christ. The assigned ministry of ambassadors and all members in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, and all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given unto us everyone the ministry of reconciliation verse 19 to which that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. You are, I am, we are all ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's search, be ye reconciled to God. That's the reason we read in Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8 verse 4, realizing we're all ambassadors as members of the body of Christ and he has committed into our hands the ministry of reconciliation. It says, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. What were they doing? Preaching the word. They didn't leave the preaching only to the apostles, only to the prophets, only to the teachers, only to the workers of miracles. Everyone, everyone, all the members of the church, as they were scattered abroad, they went everywhere preaching the word. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the acceptable motive of aspiring for more. You want more of the grace of God, more of the gift of God, and more of the ability of the Spirit that you'll be able to do more. 
what's the motive what motivates you look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 31 but covet honestly the best gifts you're an apostle covet honestly the best gifts that will make you your best as an apostle a teacher covet honestly the best gifts that will make you your best as a teacher or you are an evangelist covet honestly the best gifts that will make you the best as your minister and you fulfill the great commission you're an ambassador of Christ covet honestly the best gifts and as you covet those gifts and you look up to the Lord and the Lord grants you more of the gifts you'll be a better servant of God a better child of God in ministry as ambassadors in Jesus name covet honestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way and as you discover the excellent way of love every time you minister you will pray oh God help me not just to talk not just to help not just to govern not just to lift up other people not just to edify them not just to serve them help me to have an excellent spirit a loving spirit so that my motive and the way i minister will lift up many more people the lord effect that in every one of our lives in jesus name as we ask in faith, it will grant unto us. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. In Philippians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 3. It tells us, let nothing be done through strife or being glory. If you have sought out the more excellent way, there is no envy, there's no strife, there's no being glory when you are ministering in an excellent way, but only in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, look not every man on his own things. Don't say, I'm going to have my way and uh, whether they like it or not, I'll pounce on them, I'll crush them. I'm the pastor, I am the evangelist, I'm the teacher, I'm the leader and if they don't like my method let them go and find another pastor. It says no. It says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others. In verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus in verse 6 it says in verse 6 who being in the form of God thought it not trouble to be equal with God and then in verse 7 he made himself of no reputation made himself of no reputation you are not looking for the praise of men and you are not looking for reputation you are not looking for honor all you want to do is to serve the body of Christ and be your best for them so that you lift them up out of their feebleness, out of their weakness, out of their predicament, and out of the challenges they have. Made himself of no reputation, but he took upon him the form of a servant, a servant who wants to serve, and was made in the likeness of men. I pray that grace of God will become more abundant in every one of our lives in Jesus name you'll be a better minister say amen. amen you'll be a better member of the church amen you'll be a better ambassador of Christ everywhere you go in Jesus name and all the grace you need and all the gifts you need the Lord will supply you will be your best and your service will be profitable and rewardable both here in life and in eternity in jesus name i say amen for you let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer that all that we have learned today the lord himself 
will reproduce in us the grace, abundance of the grace of God to be as good as we ought to be in serving the Lord and serving the body of Christ. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord that the Lord will help us. We have seen that the Lord has called everyone. Let's pray. Yes, there are apostles, there are prophets, there are pastors, there are teachers, there are evangelists, and every other person is, in, is an ambassador of Christ. That is a group we all belong to, ambassadors of Christ. Let's pray that God will help us. So you can see, nobody is useless in the body of Christ. He has called everyone. My brother, pray. My sister, pray for the grace. To really be a good representative of Christ. Everywhere you find yourself. You are an ambassador for Christ. That's your ministry. Be a good ambassador. A good child of God. Represent Jesus very well everywhere you are. We are all important in the body of Christ. Let's help one another. Let's lift up the fallen. Let's pray that God will give us the grace. See the need around you. See the needs in the life of your brother, of your sister. Let's pray for the grace to be obedient to his word. To be faithful in doing his will. That the Lord Almighty God will grind unto us in Jesus' name. Please, let's meditate on what we have heard tonight. And let all be dwells of his word. May God grant us the grace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We're grateful unto you. You are a faithful God. Thank you for your word that has come to us. Reminding us that everyone, you want us to be united together. And we're important members in the body of Christ. No one is useless. Help us, O Lord, to see ourselves as important members in the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Help us, O Lord, that we all represent you as your ambassadors. Yes, we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but we have called everyone to be ambassadors for Christ. Oh Lord, I pray, give us the grace to be faithful unto you in Jesus' name. To be representing you everywhere we are in a good way in Jesus' name. Lord, give us the grace to meditate on these things and to apply them into our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we believe it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Uh, let's not forget that we'll be meeting on uh, Wednesday for the prayer meeting. And I want to remind everyone that the Global Crusade will be starting on Thursday. So please, we'll be starting Global Crusade on Thursday. And then the Women Program, Women Retreat, uh, will be taking place from Thursday at the uh, resort. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let's keep on praying for them and let's pray for ourselves. All will be well in Jesus' name. I will see you all on Wednesday. God bless you all. Good night and bye for now. <laughs>